Hello tuber heads. Today we're going to go through the carburetors on this old Johnson. It's a 1988 Johnson 60 horsepower VRO. The VRO stands for Variable Ratio Oiler. It was their first attempt at uh, automatic oil injection. Of course uh, we had this factory disabled when it was bought in 1988 so uh, we premix our fuel with the oil and uh, let's get the cover off and go through the carburetors okay we done popped the top uh, first order of business is to take this front box the air box off it's got screws around the perimeter then it's got uh, two screws on every carburetor it's got three carburetors so let's get that popped off and uh, I'll get back to the rest the next step all right so I've gotten all the the box off of the, the air box off the front of the carburetors you can see there's three carburetors now you've got to be a, a, uh, attentive to a position when you're replacing these carburetors or repairing them you've got the top carburetor has a plate on top this plastic the other two do not the other two appear to be identical however they are not identical you must differentiate these two carburetors from each other also all three bowls are interchangeable when they fit together but they do not operate the same so you each one of these is a is is unique to each carburetor so don't mix them up and when you take off the top carburetor put the top bowl on when you put the when you take off the middle carburetor you put the middle carburetor on it when you assemble the bottom carburetor you assemble the bottom carburetor on it so it makes a difference now the next step is to get these cables out the way here they're just in the way so we're gonna pull them off it's easy to do you unpin here unpin the uh, your shift linkage and then you gotta take this off this will lift up so that you can slide this off and you'll slide that off and your all your cables will be out of your way and you won't be hassling with the trying to work around them okay so I've gotten I've gotten the the shift linkage out of the way to work on the carburetors next step is to remove the link to the three carburetors so that you can work on them individually it's easy to do you just push back on it and it slips out of the out of the keepers and then you just take it out only fits back in one way so don't worry about it now the next step is you want to prevent your parts from falling down into the bottom of your engine and going into never never land where you have a hell to retrieve them if you ever even see them so the next step is a is just a tip from a pro from my experience put a rag underneath the carburetors so that if a part or a nut or a bolt or a pin or one of the midrid myrid parts that are on this thing if one of them falls off it'll fall on your rag and you can find it it won't bounce around and disappear so let's get that rag put in there and uh, go from there in case I drop any nuts or bolts they'll be caught by the rag this this pipe it goes to the bottom of the air box so it's it's left exposed when I put the air box back on it'll be connected to the air, bottom of the air box and uh, we'll go from there next step uh, is we go around the other side and and take the fuel lines off each carburetor has a fuel line so that's three fuel lines you've got to remove one two and three plus there's another fuel line that goes behind the carburetors and goes to this solenoid right here now a lot of people call this solenoid a choke when actually it's not a choke it is a primer when you're trying to crank the engine if you put this all the way forward 
gas is directly injected into the cylinders at the back of the carburetor behind the butterfly. On a choke, your butterfly is closed and the difference in your barometric pressure pulls more gasoline into the cylinder. But this is uh, priming the cylinders with gasoline from the direct pressure of the fuel pump. So that's the difference between a primer and a choke. Normal running condition is here. Uh, it's electrically operated through this uh, one wire and uh, when that uh, 12 volts is applied to that it does the same thing as doing this but it does it electrically internally and it, it will inject fuel into the cylinders directly so it's called uh, they call it a choke but actually it's just a primer it primes the cylinders with with uh, raw fuel I've got all of the uh, I've got all I've got all of the fuel lines undone and I am uh, the next step uh, is to pull the head, go ahead and, and pull the carburetors off it's got a bolt uh, right there that needs to come off they're very difficult to get to because uh, they're tucked up behind other stuff but it's right there if you can see it in the video it's hard to manipulate the camera and the light and the equipment at the same time but this nut on each carburetor on each side of each carburetor is tucked in between the shaft for the butterfly and the block so it's you have to remove it little bit by little bit on both sides and that's the only way you can get that nut off and if you drop that nut it's going to be caught by your rag so don't worry about dropping it okay so I've worked a the nuts off of each side of the carburetor on the top carburetor and it should come off with a little nudging no problem the gasket looks like it's in good shape although the carburetor kit should come with a new one so I'm gonna pull it off and replace it also now on these seals I do not use a I do not use a uh, a sealant I use a, all I use is a little bit of grease because you don't want sealant stopping up any very tiny holes that a carburetor is known to have I'll show you some of the tiny holes that carburetors have in a moment get this gasket off there we'll go through that now your next step you're going to want to remove your uh, primer solenoid. It's not absolutely necessary. However, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of tubes that pass over your bottom carburetor. So I find it just easier to access the bottom carburetor when you pull this. You want to check all your piping anyway. If any of them are brittle, you want to change them out this is the primary time to do it not while you're stuck in the middle of the lake so go ahead and change out I mean uh, remove your uh, uh, your electric primer some people call it an electric choke but it's an electric primer and uh, these two bolts right here one two all it takes to move it out the way uh, if you want to you can disconnect the wire and the whole thing will come out because you've already disconnected your uh, fuel lines. Go for it. Okay, I've got the, the top carburetor on the bench now. First thing you want to do, take off the drain plug. Be careful when you do that because, uh, you know, the carburetor is full of gasoline. Uh, it'll spread explosive gas gasoline everywhere. Plus, it doesn't taste too good in your coffee. Uh, I don't know unless you like that sort of thing might give you a little old pep and then we're going to take the the bowl off the carburetor okay you've got these uh these four Phillips head screws that they come out pretty easily of course this one's been gone through already so I'm showing you what's been done not what to do take the bowl off comes off and one piece then you have the 
uh, float right there available. Gasket, it might come off. You might have to peel it off. It depends. If it's paper, you'll have to peel it. You'll have to, you'll have to scrape it off. If it's rubber like that one, it'll it'll fall off. And then you have access to the bolt of carburetor. This is where you, most of your problems occur. It's right here. Inside here is where your gasoline is distributed into your carburetor. So right there in the bottom is your entrance to the carburetor of your fuel. It goes through there. It goes in into this uh, upright and it gets picked up here. So what happens is the gasoline evaporates but the oil does not. The oil accumulates uh, as a uh, paste in the bottom and also all of your contaminants and like little rust particles, particles of plastic, whatnot. All, all of that accumulates in the very bottom of, your, of that depression right there and in the bottom of this, this post and it gets stopped up. So that's where you want to want to clean out. Now the best thing to do is go to your auto parts distributor or uh, Wally World and get some Chem Dip carburetor cleaner. It's got a little basket in there that sets your parts in, and it chemically loosens the parts. Chemically uh, uh, loosens the uh, paste, the built-up parts, and then also you can get some. Some choke, choke cleaner gum out makes one of the best ones. It's a pressurized can and it has a little tube on it so you can put it down in all the little holes in the carburetor and clean them out. Now, Berryman is one of the best, if not the best, chemical carburetor cleaners. That's what I use and I recommend it most highly. Now, after you get your uh, carburetor out of the chemical the chemical bath your Berryman chemical carburetor and parts cleaner after you take it out of there you want to use compressed air and blow air through all of the all of the small or, uh, orifices that you see inside of the carburetor I've used a uh, I have my blower and I have a, a piece of rubber pipe that I've cut at an angle and that way it it fits more closely against that uh, that surface and you can blow out your uh, carburetor this way and uh, you got to blow all your orifice out every one of them you've got to get the carburetor completely clean uh, Every one of these vents has to be uh, blown through. Every one of them. You have to. You have to completely. You have to make this carburetor so clean you. Uh, you swear you could uh, use it in a medical profession because it has to be clean. It's got some tiny, tiny orifices that uh, uh, smallest bit of trash can stop up, especially right there. You've got to get that little bitty pipe free and clear of anything uh, that might get into your carburetor. Uh, like I said previously, uh, it's best to 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 uh, loosen up the, your your uh, uh, accumulation with a chemical, and uh, physically uh, get some kind of a pin or a needle and go in there and and wallow out the. The stuff that's in there, the carbonated stuff there, and then uh, you have to uh, uh, blow it out with your uh, compressed air. Get it completely clean because the slightest little bit will stop up one of those tiny, tiny holes and uh, make your uh, engine run uh, either not idle or idle poorly or it won't go wide open when you give it the gas. So you get it all clean, uh, get it cleaner than your little sister's mind and uh, you'll be uh, happy with its performance. 
Now while your while your bowl is soaking, you want to disassemble the rest of your carburetor. You have a pin that your float pivots on. You want to remove it. Some of these pins are one way. It has a little stop on one side or the other. So you've got to find out which end is bigger than the other end and slide it out on the opposite side. They're usually not in there very tightly. It comes out pretty easily. It's a little plastic pin. Come saw. Not very big. Then your float comes off along with your float valve. Your needle valve is right there attached to it with a tiny spring. So you've got to be careful when you're handling these parts. You don't drop them on the floor. That's why I put them on a towel so that the towel will catch the parts. Also catch all the cleaner fluid and gasoline and your coffee if you spill it. The blood on your fingers if you cut yourself. And uh, you have a gasket in the middle. This one has been replaced, but I'm going to replace it again. And uh, you have the base of your carburetor. You will have the... Um, your seat, your your fuel seat, uh, your your fuel level needle valve seat. You want to take that off because uh, got a new one in the carburetor rebuild kit. Then you want to turn it upside down and take the top off. Four bolt, four four felt heads. It comes out pretty easily. I've got the four bolts out of the top. It just pops right off. If you've got a rubber one. It, a rubber gasket it just comes right off and you can see all the channels the distribution channels that the gasoline flows through during various performance issues in the carburetor now uh, this also is going to get soaked in the chemical to uh, loosen up the, the the gunk and the carbon and the the uh, varnish that the gasoline leaves behind as it evaporates and and it leaves a varnish in the in the carburetor uh, along with the uh, the oil that congeals inside of the carburetor and uh, is the enemy of all carburetors that along with the uh, debris okay you've got to get a large screwdriver flathead screwdriver and get this seat off for your carburetor float valve it unscrews and once it unscrews you can see how tiny the hole is for you for your fuel to go through. It's not very big at all. This one's pretty clean, clean, pretty clear. It's not stopped up at all. And that's where your float is recessed into this little chamber that's inside of this screw. It's got a gasket on there. That gasket's going to have a new gasket when your kit comes in. You got to replace that gasket. And if you're lucky, you'll have a new seat also and a new needle valve. Now this is the uh, partially disassembled uh, carburetor. If you look inside of the barrel of the carburetor, you can see, if we can get lucky here, we can see the inside of the, the carburetor where there's some tiny holes right at the top of that carburetor, throat of that carburetor that, that uh, commonly get stopped up. On the top carburetor, which is the only one where you can see this, you can see the size of the holes by overturning the carburetor, and there they are right there. So those little holes right there get stopped up on a carburetor and give you problems. They're very small, they're very hard to see, and since they are so small, uh, they're prone to get stopped up with trash. That's why you have to have a filter on your fuel, not a screen. A screen will catch particles that are over a certain size, but when you get down to this size, you need to have a filter and, and put, a, put a screen first in the stream and then a filter. Now, on the bottom side of the carburetor where your bowl is, you have a pickup tube right here. This pickup tube is very important for idling 
to be clear. If your engine doesn't idle, it's because this little tube right here gets stopped up. After you soak it in your Berryman's or some kind of cleaner, you can uh, poke all of the trash out of it and then blow it out with a, with a good air gun. And you're liable to have some trash on the inside of the perimeter of here, which also needs to be cleaned out. Because you have other fuel uh, holes that need to also be cleaned and uh, flow freely. This is one right here. There's one on each side on this carburetor. One of the carburetors has three of them. So you got to be able to clean that very well. Now on, on your bowl... I'll put the bowl back in. After you've soaked it, one of the ways to get out all of the uh, gunk on the bottom of it is to get a, a 1 16th inch drill bit. I wouldn't get one any bigger than that. Get a 1 16th inch drill bit and go into the uh, front where you take the drain plug off and uh, clean out the bowl all the way to the center post. You can see it going through here. And uh, that gunk has to be cleaned out because uh, it will uh, stop fuel from going into there and it, you won't idle anymore. And uh, it'll stop you from uh, having a, a smooth running engine. So you want to clear that out best you can. Make sure that you have a, uh, a a clear, clean flow of fuel through that opening right there. And in the bottom of here, get us get some steel wool and uh, get your cleaner. Get your steel wool and form it into a little cone and push it down into the center of your. Uh, of your column there and clean it out very thoroughly it's got to be it's got to be clean like new all of this has to be clean like new with no particles no particles no uh, debris anywhere inside of there those little bitty holes are so easy to stop up and it will not perform well if you want performance you've got to maintain cleanliness in your fuel system so uh, clean that out with your uh, chemical cleaner and then uh, when you reassemble it uh, you won't have any problems with your fuel. When your parts come in, your new carburetor parts, when they come in you check out and see what's in the kit. Any part you see in the kit that's new you throw away your old ones or you get them off of the bench. You do not want to mix your old and the new parts because they're usually matched and if there's a different manufacturer you don't want to mix them up so it's got a new seat it's got a new float new gaskets in the kit so we're going to take all the old ones out of there and uh, put new ones in now I got this kit from jetskiplus.com uh, there's a free plug for them and uh, you get your parts where you want to, but that's where I got mine. They were fast on their shipping and cheap on their price. Uh, and, and they gave more parts in the kit than I could use. So I recommend them. Now I've gone ahead and put in my new seat. You can see the, the needle valve going up and down with the float. The new shaft, the uh, pin that came with the uh, new kit is different than the one that I took out in that it has a locking uh, knurl on the end of this one so you've got to get a piece of, you got to get some pliers and squeeze it in like that and it, it will lock that that pin into place Got to be careful with it. Don't want to squeeze it too hard or you'll break something or bend something. You don't want to bend it. Now I've got the I've got the uh, knurled in 
seated. I don't want to seat it 100%. I like a little bit of it to stick out so that in the future if someone needs to disassemble this they know what direction to knock this pin, in, pin out because it's got a portion of the neural ex extruding visible so that uh, you know what direction to knock the pin out. Now to set the float I like to keep it level with the surface of the carburetor and it's about level I think that'll work as long as it doesn't touch the uh, the body of the carburetor it'll be alright and it, it'll allow gas to come in as soon as the float goes down enough to unseat the needle and uh, this one will have a, also got to be careful got to put your gasket in the middle here now when you're putting together your the new like for example the new seat for your needle valve just because it's new doesn't mean it's perfect just like a girlfriend you have to check it out make sure that you can indeed see no obstructions inside of the well that the needle sits in because one little piece of part in there and it's going to ruin your day. You're going to have to tear it all back down again to see what's wrong with your carburetors and you won't know which one it is. You'll have to do all three of them just to find out. One of them has a little piece of debris in that well that you did not check before you went back up with your carburetors. So double check. This is the time to double check not after you've already assembled everything blow out everything with a blow gun make sure everything's clean and free of debris so that you can get your carburetor up and running without any problems first time you want to uh, you want it to start first time you crank on it so let's get it all clean your gaskets that uh, go on your carburetor manifold I don't put sealant on those because of the, all of the very tiny holes that are uh, endemic to a carburetor but I do coat them with a, a layer of grease and that way they won't stick to the uh, they won't stick to the block after years of service when you want to pull them off they'll come off without having to scrape them off of your block so I grease them up and uh, put them back together uh, with a layer of grease so anyway, that's about the, the gist of it. You want to uh, go back up with assembly just the way you disassembled it. Takes a little work, but uh, in one day you can uh, go through all three carburetors. Get your boat running like new. Not hard to do. Doesn't take rocket scientists. When I used to be a rocket scientist, I didn't make as much money as I did before I became a, a boat motor mechanic. If you don't believe that, take your boat motor to a boat motor shop and you'll see. Well, anyway, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. I hope you learned a little something about this engine. It performs very well. And uh, I don't have any performance issues from the carburetors anymore. They, uh, they seem to work out pretty well. So, enjoy. Bye. Let me know how you make out with yours.